What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video series for you. And inside of this video series, we're gonna be talking about a free program called Inkscape. Now, this is my go-to program. Anytime I'm creating custom overlays or logos for people, it's 100% free, so it doesn't cost you a dime. And so I wanted to make a video series kind of walking you through Inkscape basics, teaching you all the tools inside the program, showing you some cool tricks, and then along the way, we're going to build some custom overlays and logos and things like that just to get you familiar with this program. So that's what this video series is going to be about. So anyways, let's go. So to start off with, this first video is actually just going to be going into the basics of Inkscape. I'm just going to be showing you kind of where everything is and what everything does, kind of from a brief overview standpoint. Uh, I'm going to try to not go too deep into everything because I'll, I, I want to keep this video as short as possible. Um, if I went through everything in one video, this video would just be entirely too long. So I'm really going to try to break this up into pieces. But in this video, we're just going to start by getting you familiar with some of the tools inside of Inkscape. The first thing we're going to go over in this video are these little menu items over here on the left. These are your tools and you will use these a lot. Now, I'm not going to go through every single one of these tools because this video would just be entirely too long, but I am going to kind of pinpoint the ones that I use the most. So starting up here at the top is our selection tool. And as you can see, you can use this to select different items. You can use these little arrows to rescale items. Uh, if you click on this item, you'll see that your arrows change. You can use this to free rotate. Uh, so that's just kind of a basic overview of what this tool does. Now, whenever you have a tool like this selected, you'll notice that you have a bunch of options along the top here, and we'll kind of just briefly walk through some of these. Uh, this first one right here rotates your selection at 90 degrees one direction. This one does 90 degrees back the other direction. This one flips horizontally. This one flips vertically. Uh, you will use those a lot. These four right here adjust your layers. So let's say I want this to be my top layer. I can click this button. It brings it to the top. This one takes it all the way to the back. And then of course these two go up or down by one layer. The next tool down here is of course our nodes tool. And anytime you draw something out, you're going to have these little nodes in it that you can adjust. Now I'm not gonna go real deep into nodes because the next video is going to be completely about nodes. But as you can see, I can grab the middle of this line. I can kind of distort this object, you know, a little bit. I can click on this node and I get these little bars where I can go in here and kind of fine tune my curves. Uh, so that's kind of a basic overview of what the nodes tool does. Now up here at the top, you'll see several buttons. This one adds a node. This one subtracts a node. Uh, this joins selected nodes and this breaks the path apart. Those are the four that I use the most, but feel free to go in here and learn what the rest of these do. The next tool down, of course, is our square tool. Now, if you click your left button and you hold it and you scroll and then you let go, you can see that it kind of draws these objects out. That's how you would draw a square. The next one down, of course, is a circle tool. It's the same thing. You just kind of drag and let go and it draws that object. Uh, this one does different objects like stars and polygons and of course you can go up here in the top and you can adjust all those shapes uh, the next one that i use a lot is of course the pencil tool if you tap your left button once and then tap it again it will draw a straight line or if you hold your left button down it will draw like a regular pencil the next one down that i use a lot is of course my text tool and we can go in here and add text to our to our project uh, if you go up here on the top you'll see that you have all these different fonts to choose from i will be talking about fonts in a later video so we're not going to go too deep into that uh, a lot of these other options are kind of like microsoft word if you've ever used microsoft word you know you can do normal italic uh, if the font allows for it you can change the size of your font. You can set whether you want it to align left or middle or right. So most of you guys should be fairly familiar with this stuff. 
Uh, this one right here is your uh, gradient tool. Now, we will have a whole video on gradients as well, so I'm not going to go too deep into that, but that's where you would find that tool. Uh, this one down is a pick colors tool, and this is really useful if someone like gives you an image and you're like, okay, let me, I, I want this color. I want to know what this exact color is. Uh, you can use this tool, you can click on this color, and over here you'll notice an RGBA number, and that gives you the exact code for that color. The last one I'll show you here is the fill tool. Now, when you go here and you click inside of an object, it will fill objects. Uh, if it's not filling in your object, you may have to go up here and mess with the threshold a little bit, or you may have to take your nodes and kind of fix them. We'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, but that's just kind of a brief overview of the tools in this left hand menu. The next thing that I want to make you guys aware of are these menu items over here on the right. Uh, whenever you first install Inkscape and open it up, these actually will not be there by default. Uh, but there are going to be three that we will always use for every project and you are going to want to add these. The first one here is, of course, export PNG to add it. All you have to do is hit shift control E. The second one down is your fill and stroke. And to add it, you'll hit shift control F. And then, of course, your filter editor, which to find it, you go right here under filters and you go down here to the bottom and you'll see filter editor. And that will add that to this list. So the first one in this list is the export PNG image. Now, obviously, this is very important anytime you want to export uh, out of the program, but it's also very important for another reason. So let's say I go in here and I select this object and I want to know the exact size of this object. As you can see here under image size, it gives you the width and the height. So that allows you to go in here and see exactly how big this image is. Uh, over here, you'll notice your pixels. Now, some people will come to you and say, I want something at 300. I want something at 400 pixels. Uh, I always just do it at default by 300. That's just the size I always use. Um, but this is where you would set your pixel size at. To export, you would click this export as. Go in here, give it a name, select where you want it saved at, and click save. Then once you are done, you just hit the export button. Uh, one thing to pay attention to whenever you're exporting is make sure this selection button up here is selected. Sometimes Inkscape will automatically select this custom button. Uh, if you try to export it that way, it will not work properly. The next one down is your fill and stroke. And I use this one a lot, especially when I'm trying to come up with my own custom colors. Uh, I'll kind of walk through all these different items. Uh, this first one here turns your fill off. The second one turns your fill on. The third one gives it a linear gradient and the fourth one does a radial gradient. Now, I don't use these other ones very often, but feel free to learn what they do. Down here, you'll notice that I use this HSL. Um, this is the one that I normally use whenever I'm coming up with custom colors. You can kind of slide these sliders around and kind of get it the way you want. Uh, be very aware of this alpha channel. This obviously makes things see through, but not only does it make it see through, it actually changes this RGBA number down here as well. So be very aware of that. Uh, this RGBA number is very important. So once you come up with your custom colors for your channel, you're definitely going to want to memorize or write down these numbers somewhere. Uh, let's say you're working in another program like After Effects and you want to match this purple exactly. You're going to want to know what this code is so that your colors all match. Uh, this button right here allows you to pick colors from an image. So let's say I wanted to make this one the same color as this green. Uh, while it's selected, I can click on this. I can tap inside the green. And as you see, it will make it the exact same color. So that's a very useful tool. Uh, right here below it, you'll notice that you have a blur. You can kind of blur your object. And then here you have your opacity where you can make things more see-through. Now, one thing to know is that if you use the opacity here, it does not change your RGBA number. Whereas if you use this alpha channel, it does. So just kind of be aware of that. The next one over up here at the top is your stroke paint. It does the same thing. Uh, this controls the outer line and the color that you want. 
Uh, obviously, it, a lot of these controls are the same. You can blur it. You can make it different colors. Uh, you can use gradients on it. The third one over is your stroke style. This one is where you actually select the size of your stroke. So let's say, you know, we want our stroke to be a little bit bigger. Uh, we can obviously come in here and make our stroke bigger. You can make it a different color, you know, whatever. Uh, but this is where you would actually change the size of your stroke. You can change it to dashes if you prefer. You know, there's a lot of different options here you can kind of play around with. So that's basically the fill and stroke. The third one down is the filter editor. Now, I'm not going to get into filters in this video because we're going to have a video where we talk about filters later. But if you want to find your filters, you just go right here under the filters tab. And as you can see, there are a ton of filters to go through. The one thing I do want to make you aware of when you're doing these filters like this is that once you go into some of them, uh, let's find one here, uh, diffuse light. Right here in the bottom of it, you'll notice this little live preview button. And what this allows you to do is toggle it on and off to see what this is going to look like once you've added the filter. Uh, so just be aware of that live preview button there. Also, I want to point out that Inkscape gives you a lot of custom colors. You'll see a bunch here at the bottom. Uh, you can use these colors too if you wish. If you hover over the top of them, it will give you the RGBA number below it. To use one, you just select your item, click on this, and it will actually change that color. Uh, I don't normally use that very much. I normally like to come up with my own custom colors. But one thing I do do a lot of times is let's say I've got this and I want to make it a little bit more visible. I might draw like a big black square behind it uh, just so this shows up a little bit better. Uh, you can actually go down here and click black or white if you need just a really quick black or white background. And then, of course, if you need to turn your fill off and on, you can do so right here. You can also adjust your opacity right here at the bottom as well. So if you don't want to come up here necessarily and mess with your opacity here, uh, you can do that at the bottom as well. The next thing I want to make you aware of are these little tools that are right here on the right hand side. Now you can hover over each one of them to kind of see what they are, but basically what they are is they're just shortcuts for some of these menu items up here. Some of the ones that you use the most like this one. This one is a save button. It saves the document. So instead of having to go up here and go to file save, they've just kind of given you these little quick buttons to kind of help you out with your workflow a little bit. So uh, these are very helpful. The other thing I want to point out is right here in the top right corner, you'll see enable and disable snapping. Now, if you want to take two objects and make them snap together in a corner, obviously this is off right now. But if I turn this on, you'll see that it just kind of snaps to that corner. Equally, if you're using a pencil and you want to snap to a corner while you're drawing, uh, this is where you would enable and disable your snapping at. Uh, sometimes this is annoying and sometimes you just want to click it off real quick. Uh, this is where you would do so. And then, of course, you have all these different options right here for your snapping tool. The next tool that I kind of wanted to make you guys aware of is this little lock tool. Um, I'll explain here in just a second what this does. You can find this either here when your selection tool is selected or you can find it right down here in the bottom left corner. Um, basically, I have a shape here. This shape is 1920 by 1080, and I want to rescale this, but I want to keep it at that same 16 by 9 ratio. Uh, if I have the lock off when I move this, you'll see that it not only adjusts the width, but the height together at the same time and kind of distorts that aspect ratio. But if you click this lock button on here, you'll see that it actually resizes it and it keeps that same ratio. So uh, that's just something to be aware of as you're working through your projects. The last thing that I kind of wanted to go over in this video are keyboard shortcuts because whenever you're working with a program like this, obviously keyboard shortcuts are going to help you out tremendously. Uh, if you go up here under your menu, you'll see that a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are listed right here so you can memorize those. But I'm just going to go over a few of them real quick to kind of help you guys out. Uh, the first one that I use a lot, of course, is copy and paste. Most of you guys will probably know this from using Windows. It's pretty much the same commands. 
Uh, if you select this item and you hit control C and then control V, it will obviously duplicate that item. Uh, you can go up here underneath edit and go to copy and paste, or you can right click and do a copy and paste. Uh, but control C, control V is just a little bit easier way of doing that. A couple of other keyboard shortcuts that I use a lot that really help me to get around my project are, of course, the shift and control buttons. Now, by default, if you use the scroll wheel on your mouse, it will go up and down. But let's say I want to go left and right. All I have to do is hold down my shift button and use my scroll wheel. And now I'll go left and right let off a shift and I go up and down again. So those are very useful. That just helps you from having to go over here and grab these bars all the time and move it around. You know, it's just a little bit easier to use the scroll wheel on your mouse and go left or right or up and down. The other one that is extremely useful, and this one I probably use more than any, is of course the zoom. Now, if I wanted to work on this corner, I would have to go down here to the bottom right hand corner and I would have to zoom in. Then I would have to use these bars and kind of move it around and stuff. And that, that just gets a little bit monotonous. A much easier way to scroll in is to use the control button. Uh, if you hold down your control anywhere where I put this cursor, when I use the scroll wheel on my mouse, you'll see that it scrolls in right on that position. So let's say I'm working on this corner. Now I want to work on the left hand corner. I just hold down control. I use my scroll button and scroll out. Put this over here, scroll back in, and now I'm on this corner. Same thing goes for any of these corners. So that's a very useful tool and it will help you to get through your projects a little bit easier. The final thing that I kind of want to cover in this video, because I know I'm probably going to get questions about this, is the way that this Inkscape looks. When you first download Inkscape, yours will not look anything like this. It'll just be all white. As you can see here, I've got this kind of gray background that I use and I've got this set of icons that I really like. Uh, so I'm going to show you actually how to set this up. Uh, if you go right here under your edit preferences, uh, this little box pops up and right here under interface, you will see theme. As you can see, the theme that I'm using is the high contrast inverse and the icons that I'm using are Tango. So if you want your Inkscape to look like mine, uh, you'll have to go in and actually set your theme up. So this concludes video number one in our video series on Inkscape. Now, I do realize there was a lot of information in this video. Uh, some of you guys may already be familiar with these types of programs, so a lot of this stuff is not going to be new to you. But I did feel like it was important to start from the beginning for anybody who's maybe never used a program like this before or never used Inkscape in particular. Uh, so that's kind of what this video was about, to just kind of get you familiar with the tools and stuff inside of Inkscape. So for the second video, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into nodes, and I'm gonna show you some cool tricks that you can do with nodes. So definitely come back and check that video out as well. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes or comments down below, or if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm always glad to help. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next video.